Welcome to this episode of Great Minds with Michael Medved, where we have the opportunity to discuss fascinating and perennial questions with scientists, thinkers, and yes, artists and storytellers too, who are able to shed some very special light on some of the eternal human questions. Uh, Randall Wallace is one of those people. He is a singular figure in Hollywood uh, in many ways, not just because of the quality of his work, writing the screenplay to Braveheart, writing and directing the great Vietnam movie, We Were Soldiers, and uh, most recently doing a fairly classic film about a horse and uh, uh, those with a very special relationship to that horse. The film was called Secretariat, which also touches on America's endless fascination with sports. Uh, All of this out of the fertile mind of someone who also writes novels and songs and much more. Uh, Randall Wallace, thank you for joining us on Great Minds with Michael Medved. Uh, I, I want to get to the question of Hollywood prejudices uh, coming up, but when we last spoke, you were describing the way you ended up as a filmmaker, uh, as a writer of films and a director of films, and it was not something you had aspired to do when you were a small boy. It wasn't Steven Spielberg with his little Super 8 camera. Right when he was in junior high school, I think it was. And for Stephen, probably when he was, uh, before he was able to walk. But um, in your case, it it came to you. And you talked about the first screenplay that you completed. And you got an agent for the screenplay. Were you able to get that screenplay produced? No, but it, it, and when I've looked back on it, there are are parts of it that were, unpolished and um, imagine that yeah yeah I don't want to say embarrassing but I would say embarrassing but it was exuberant and it was and I dare say it was fearless what was the screenplay about um, screenplay was a uh, I had had been in the the music business for a couple of years with a company that was controlled by organized crime uh, I didn't know that when I when I went the 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 principles of the company, um, the the way the the story went and the way I actually witnessed, was that uh, they were compulsive gamblers and they owed so much money to gambling interests that the gambling interests were then able to influence the way the company worked. And I was fascinated by that. And I I wrote a story. Uh, the Godfather uh, was a movie that I just admired and still do, uh, with such uh, depth. And um, I wrote a story about a Southern boy who comes to work at a company, discovers that it's controlled by the mafia. Uh, they try to kill him. He escapes. He goes back to Tennessee and gets his his hillbilly relatives to come out with him. As one of my friends described it, it was the Hatfields versus the Corleones. <laughs> so... It, it was a great deal of fun. Oh yeah, I thought, and and my agent thought so too, and used it to get me a lot of work. And all of the work was um, was particularly inappropriate for me, <laughs> uh, but I said yes to everything because I thought to be a professional, I should explore every field I could. Um, I wrote. Uh, I was hired to write a, a script called Portrait of a Disco Roller Skater. Uh, have some some really, I, I was in the depths of, of this. And but you had never actually been a disco roller skater. No, I, I actually had not. I <laughs> uh, surprised they asked me. I had been an animal trainer, but that was another. Uh, but uh, the big break for me in writing came when uh, Steve Cannell, through his favorite composer Mike Post, and his really his only composer. Uh, Mike Post and I knew each other from working out in a gym. I just bumped into him, and he was one of my heroes in music. And um, I never did anything in music with Mike, but he invited me to join a running club that he was uh, a big part of. And and he sort of kicked the doors down for me to, to meet Steve Cannell. And I went to work sort of as Steve's protege very quickly. They called me Steve's fair-haired goy. 
Uh, <laughs> And I loved being at that company. I was surrounded by, by brilliant, um, active writers. And TV writers are disciplined, and I really respected that. They well, it has to be turned in so quickly, I yes. mean, and, and on a regular basis. You yes. have to come up with stuff every week. Yes, exactly. Um, so um, so I, I, I journeyed through that, and, and when I uh, – my, my first big break was when I – I, I sat down and I wrote um, the one script that I thought was the last thing I would get a chance to do, and I wanted to write the movie I wanted to see and that I wanted my sons to see, and that was called Love and Honor, a story about an American cavalryman who is sent by Benjamin Franklin to the Russia of Catherine the Great. I, I love history as I know you do, and uh, I was fascinated with the notion that Beethoven, Thomas Jefferson, Voltaire, uh, Thomas Paine, uh, all these brilliant minds were on the earth at the same time. If they'd had cell phones, they could have spoken with each other. And then we were, and this was, this was 25 years ago, we were having presidential elections and I couldn't find anybody I wanted to vote for. And I thought, what happened to us? Uh, and the notion of what was it like to be an American when, when just to say, I think we should be independent, was a death sentence if the ruling powers caught you? Um, so I wrote that story, and that immediately led me to Sidney Pollock's daughter, Rebecca, who was an executive at MGM, uh, and she is truly her father's daughter. And Sidney is one of my all-time heroes. His, his movies are probably, as a group, my favorite. We it's so funny because just today I, we were talking about Jeremiah Johnson, ah, which is one yes. of one of his great films and yes. a historical film based on a real incident. Yes, just a great great piece of work. So during this entire period of time, you're progressing through the industry. Yes, do people know that you're a serious Christian guy from Tennessee? They know you're from Tennessee. Yeah, did they did they know about the depth and importance of your faith, and was that ever an impediment in the blatantly secular world of Hollywood? First of all, they didn't believe that I was a writer. Uh, when I would meet people in person, like the, the first time I met Arnold Schwarzenegger, uh, I had, had been called to do uh, some work on a script, that, and I, I was excited to do it, and and. A, a driver brought me up to the studio and and uh, pointed out Arnold. Of course, you didn't have to point him out. And so, <laughs> and Arnold was on the phone and and he it's said, "The one with the German accent." Yeah, yeah, just the little, the scrawny guy, and said, "Go stand next to him when he finishes the call. Uh, he'll he'll take you back to the trailer and you can talk." And I went over and I stood next to him and he finished the call and he hung up, and he kind of glanced around and saw me and then he went back and he waited and he waited and he. He dialed a number on his cell phone and said, where is he? And they said, he's the guy right next to you. And Arnold looked at me, and he kind of jumped. And he said, I thought you were a stuntman. And, th and that, <laughs> that experience was sort of, uh, I, I didn't come across like a guy that sat in an office and wrote. Um, and I think people were surprised that I was um, – involved in things like military exercises and combat sports and um, and whenever I would make any reference to um, to anything of faith it, there weren't many people that even had any field of reference to discuss that like when when I met you and I, I had listened to you for years thank you uh, I knew that you were that you saw the the questions of faith to be profound and the, 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 the best ones of all the great questions there are, um, but other people never even, it never even came up. So um, I, I had an approach. It was not, and I thought about this a lot. Um, there's a, a phrase in the New Testament that, that Paul, I believe, wrote, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. I am not ashamed of the gospel. But, I always thought 
if people can see faith in me, it's so much better than if I tell them. And I never wore a cross because, uh, not that I would be, ever be ashamed to wear one, but I always thought, if, if, if I can't live in a way that somebody sees my, uh, sees integrity and love and approachability to me, then anything I say is, is just bumping my gums anyway. Wow. Okay. You're a member of the Motion Picture Academy. Yes. Um, there has been so much talk in recent years about um, the Hollywood blackout, as they say, or, or Hollywood so white was a whole hashtag. Um, there are some prejudices in Hollywood, but most of those prejudices are not racial, are they? Or do you think that they are? I don't believe they are. But I also have to have the, um, the humility to say that I wouldn't experience them in the same way. If it, um, but that, that, what this gets to is the question is, are there prejudices against? Because there are so few people in the movie business who are openly religious. There's right. some. Uh, you're prominent among them, but in, in general, it's um, if if you take the statistics, which I think are accurate, that about half of Americans are pretty serious about religious faith. Forty percent of Americans go to church or synagogue every week. Um, the percentage in Hollywood, would you agree, would be considerably less than that? Yes. Yeah, I mean, much, much, much. Much less than and, that, and I believe the higher you get up the the uh, the power ladder, the percentages go down. Right, and the more the business itself becomes a kind of substitute religion. But uh, I, I guess what I'm wondering about, and I know that a number of people who are listening to us to to us speak about this, are probably wondering about it. Did did you ever encounter? particularly after you became so conspicuously successful with Braveheart, that notion of some dismissive attitude because you're a Christian? I honestly don't, have never felt that my faith was a disadvantage. I do know that Hollywood uh, loves to categorize, and, and that is a disadvantage for, for everyone. Everyone wants to wants to to put you in a box, but I think that the the question of dogma is the real one. That the that God in Hollywood is celebrity, and is equation with money. And uh, I you know I my my little model for it is that. In Hollywood, we worship celebrity. In New York, they worship money. In the South, I think they worship honor and pride. Uh, there's this this thing about we don't care what your daddy was, but who are you? And that's a that is an ego. That's a proud thing that we have. I think that in Hollywood, if someone did business, no matter what you did, no matter how heinous your behavior might be to everyone else there, even if they, if, if it's because of your dogma or because of your, um, you, in, any of your behavior, but if your films were making money, everybody would want to make a film with you. Um, I, I, I do believe that. I, I think that, I mean, there, I do know, s absolutely know people with integrity who are not of my faith or seemingly of any other. Um, one of my, my, favorite people in the world is Joe Roth and Joe I, I know Joe uh, so so Joe is the one who found the book Heaven is for Real when it was expected to be an absolute blip um, he he saw a review of it in the New York Times but there was little mention of it and and Joe had had an experience uh, with losing a child and uh, he knew immediately that this story would be, even when the publishers did not. Um, and because it was Joe who called me to say, I found this story, would you be interested in, in writing and directing it? 
that I said yes. Had it not been to Joe, I would not have. And, and that film's remarkable success, we should explain to people who haven't seen the film, it's based upon a what has become a highly yes. contested uh, true story, uh, but of a struggling pastor, played by Greg Kinnear in the film, whose son has a near-death experience and comes back from that near-death experience describing his experiences in heaven, meeting right. his grandfather and made, ultimately meeting Jesus. Right. And challenging material for a movie. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. And, um, and it, it was also disturbing to me in, in some of its claims as it was to the principles in the story. The, like it, um, the child doesn't die. So in whatever, like we talk about ghost logic in, in stories, um, how, how could it be that he went to heaven if he didn't die? And, and the, the pastor is having to wrestle with his own faith, and I related to all of that, but I didn't want the movie to, to only be about wrestling. I wanted it to be about the notion of what is affirmed in this story. And, and what's affirmed in the story, if, if I may say, is, is family and the importance of faith but one of the things I liked about the film so much, and it's different from the book, is that you do play it up the middle. You can come out of that film not certain of what the answers to the ultimate questions really are. The film asks the questions. And, and I believe, yes, the, the film embraces the mystery. Yes, exactly right. And I believe that that's how I approach Hollywood. I will often think, if these people really knew what I believed, would they throw me out of the room or would they, would they break down in a sense and say, I, I want faith too? You know, when, when you have a child, when you hold your child, uh, it doesn't matter what your intellectualizations are. You are glimpsing God. And I, I, I have a friend um, whom you may know, Mordecai Finley, Rabbi mm -hmm, Finley. Sure. Uh, he is a profound figure to me and has mm -hmm. taught me a great deal. The last time I saw him, um, he said to me uh, that his daughter is in Israel and is doing a, a dangerous job with the Israeli military. And as I was leaving, I said, Rabbi, I'm going to pray for you and your daughter and your family. And he paused a moment and he said, you know, intellectually, I don't believe in a God who entered intervenes in human affairs because we ask him. But when I know my daughter's going into danger, I pray too. And, and I love that. It, it's, it, it's, you know, the power. I, I think whatever they think of me, and, and I'll always think that they, in some ways I'm swimming uphill always, but we always are. If we're trying to get somewhere we haven't ever been, we're, we're swimming upstream. And, um, and if it's because of, of what someone has heard about me in terms of my faith or, or, or politics or, or anything else, uh, or they just don't like that I have a high quote, <laughs> that if they hire me, they're going to have to pay, uh, then that's just a challenge. And, and my thought is it's, it's certainly not greater than what other people have encountered in terms of prejudice. So... I just need to man up and have faith and trust. What a remarkable series of films you've created. We haven't even gotten into Braveheart uh, or We Were Soldiers or Secretariat yet, though we have talked about Heaven is for Real. I also want to get a chance to speak with you about the dream project that you haven't yet made. But we will get to that as we continue the conversation on a future episode of Great Minds with Michael Medved. Here speaking with Randall Wallace. Um, it is so encouraging, I think, to many people to hear that even in the highest levels of our popular culture, uh, that a person of the character and qualities of Randall Wallace can, can achieve what he has achieved. Uh, if you want to make sure that you subscribe to other episodes of Great Minds with Michael Medved, please go to our website. It's very simply, Minds with 
Medved. That's Minds with Medved. Or you can, uh, and when you're there at the website, please think about what you can donate and ways that you can support this continued programming. Uh, Appreciate it. Don't forget to uh, check out the website and find out about Randall Wallace's career. We'll also talk a little bit later about the remarkable and inspiring hymn uh, that he wrote as part of one of his movie projects. That and more coming up. And thank you for joining us with uh, Great Minds with Medved.